Welcome everybody, welcome back to Homestead Heart. And today you all have wrapped up chores for the morning. Um, out here in the big garden, just checking on everything. And so far things are looking pretty good. I think I found a vole hole at the entrance of the gate there. And um, I do realize that we do have voles. And I did do some research on moles versus voles. And I have learned that moles are primarily meat eaters. They like grubs and things of that nature, right? And voles like vegetation, right? They like vegetation and vegetables and whatnot. So I think we have a vole problem, but I hope we have come up with a solution that I will share with you all in another video. And I did harvest, like I said, we had that one, that one okra plant that's still been kind of hanging around out here. And it gives us an okra here and there, right? And it's that motherland okra. And although this looks pretty big, actually it's really, really very tender and still very velvety, right? So this is actually a pretty, nice size for this okra and it is extremely extremely tasty yeah so we've been enjoying just eating the one or two that we get here and there fresh every day but you all the reason for this video this morning the as you can see everything is looking pretty good this morning the broccoli and the cauliflower and cabbages and the Brussels are looking really, really good. Actually, I thought I was going to uh, lose more because the temperatures were just so hot. I thought I was going to lose more than the one, two, three, four that I've lost of the Brussels. But no, they're looking good. They're doing really, really good. And I'm okay with losing four. That's why we plant so much. Now, this brings me to the topic of the video for today you know it's a lot of hard work but i'm very happy to do it you know the more we learn about our food where it comes from you all and if they're grown on these really massive intensive type farms sprayed with chemicals like roundup that can be sprayed directly on the crops now even though roundup just paid out so many millions of dollars to people who in a class action lawsuit i believe to so many people who were made sick by using their products well they're still spraying those chemicals directly onto so much of our food right and so you all we wonder why we wonder why cancer is just, that's just the normal word today. Cancer, when you hear people getting sick, it just seems so normal to hear, oh, they got cancer, oh, what kind, right? That's just, it's being made normal, but cancer is not normal. That's not normal. I don't know if you remember back maybe in the 80s, in the 70s, or uh, even prior to that, you didn't hardly hear of somebody getting sick and dying from cancer, right? You didn't hear about that. You didn't hear about people having thyroid problems, heart conditions, obesity, you know. Ms. H and I were talking when we were growing up we didn't have friends that were obese. None of them, no one, hardly, that we knew was obese. We did know, you know, you would see a few people here and there, and it could have been due to different health issues and whatnot, but that wasn't common when we were growing up to see people suffering from diabetes and all of that, you know, that wasn't as common back then as it is today right 
because now we have so so many options of poison that is free to put in your body right so much poison that's free to put in your body and now we have medical bills now we have five six seven eight nine ten different prescriptions that we have to take because you could take a blood pressure medication for high blood and it starts affecting your kidneys and then you got to take medication for your kidneys and it starts affecting something else right so do you see i'm happy to do this i'm happy to do this We lost all those sweet potatoes to voles. But when I thought about it, I would rather lose a few sweet potatoes to voles. I would rather lose a few carrots to voles than to go to the store and buy something that has possibly been sprayed with a chemical that could kill me. I would rather share my food with the voles because at least I know my food is healthy because I don't use those chemicals here in our garden. I don't use synthetic fertilizers of any kind in our garden. And we still get pretty, 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 pretty good harvest without using any of it. I know we probably want the tomato leaves to be beautiful. We want the perfect tomato nice bright red without a blemish on it but i will take my damaged tomato i will take my leaves with a few holes i will take my plants that may have an issue with a few hornworms i'll take it if it means that i can grow my food organically and have no worries about where it's coming from. And even with the fertilizers that we use, right? Like um, blood meal, bone meal, potassium, things of that nature. I have been studying for the last six months, I'll say, about how to make my own fertilizers just with what you see here on the farm. Just with the vegetation that you see here on the farm, learning how to, you know, I really don't do too much of bringing like the science of things to the channel. I like to keep it simple, but I love the science. I love it. <laughs> I'm that nerd. <laughs> I'm that nerd, but I love the science of things. And I don't bore folks with that. It's a lot of places you can get that from. I, don't, I try not to do that too much. I try to make things very simple for just your regular person who just want to grow some tomatoes, who just want to grow some eggplant, who just want to grow some lettuce and cabbages and all of that and potatoes. So we try to keep things as simple as possible even for us, right? I mean, I don't mind knowing, you know, and learning. It didn't, you know, it doesn't mean that <laughs> that I want to be, you know, speaking that way. I just want to learn it just for my own. I just want to know. I just like to know stuff. So in order for me to learn how to create my own fertilizers, I have a ton of, um, not a ton, but I got a lot of banana plants and trees that are full, the leaves are full of potassium, naturally, just naturally full of potassium. We process chickens, we have their feathers and other parts. We have their poop loaded with nitrogen. When we process them, their bones remaining, that you can literally let those bones dry out and grind them into a fine powder, really. And really, you can do that with any the bones of any animal, really. Even the bones of um, 
deer that our dogs love to bring us one home and, and show us that it was found dead on the road or something attacked it, but they like to bring it home to show us, look what we got. <laughs> and then not to mention all of the different, what some folks call weeds, you know, the wildflowers and, you know, just different plants that we are learning about that just grow out here naturally, full of nutrients. The leaves on the trees, full of nutrition for our plants and our trees. So doing things, learning how to do things naturally, even at some point will start to eliminate the need for us to go to the store and even purchase fertilizers like feather meal and blood meal or blood meal, bone meal, right? Learning how to balance those fertilizers. So if you wanted a balanced fertilizer, a 10, 10, 10 is what you might see synthetically in the stores or organically, but just learning how to do that on our own is going to be critical for us if we can't buy the fertilizers that we like to have. So all that you see here, oh, I almost stepped on my, <laughs> I almost stepped on my food. All that you see here, it takes a lot of work and a lot of patience, a lot of babysitting. Sometimes it's sad because you could have beautiful seedlings one day and then come back the next day, they're all withered up and dead. Either your fault or no fault of yours. But sometimes that stuff happens and you gotta start all over again. You gotta reseed. Yeah, but it's all worth it. It's all worth it. It's all worth it. Yeah. This is a row of cauliflower right here. And then this little third of a row. That's, that's what was left of the cauliflower. And God willing, if we get every single head of cauliflower off of these plants, that is going to be so wonderful for us. I'm gonna do a video talking about why do we grow so much food? In fact, I may do that video right after this one. I received a nice little letter in the mail from a person who has never grown anything, not even an ivy. And they don't understand why we grow so much at once. And that's a good question for a person who has never grown a garden before. You don't understand that. And, um, you know, it's understandable that people who've never grown food before would understand why we grow so much. And I'll explain that in another video. But you all, all that you see here in this garden I started some turnips that I'm afraid we might not get because of the voles. And if we do get some, that'll be great. But will we get a lot of them? I don't know. We're working on a trap for that. And we'll see how it goes, you know. Yeah. But you all, taking your health into your own hands is so very, very important. If you can't grow your own food, then get the best that your money can afford. If you can get it organically, by all means, I'm, I'm, I'm imploring you to look up local farmers in your area. Look up local farmers in your area and just see how you can go about being a part of their community supported agriculture if they have that program available or csa 
See if you can be a part of that. See if you can just go to the farmer's market where they may go and sell their crops and you can ask them, talk to them. What kind of fertilizers do you use? Do you grow organically or what are you using? Are you growing synthetically? You know, I wanted to go to a farm, a peach farm and just get peaches. I wanted to get a lot of peaches, you know? But I started asking some questions and I could tell I was making some folks uncomfortable with the questions that I was asking. Because I had, I felt like if this is going into my body, I have a right to know what you're putting on these peaches. I have a right to know what are you spraying your trees with to make them look so beautiful. The peaches look absolutely gorgeous. I felt like I had a right to know what do, what do you use? Well, um, different stuff, you know. Exactly. What do you use? Well, you know, we don't really tell people what we use. Why not? Is there something wrong with what you're using? Why don't you tell people what you're using to spray on your peach trees to make them look this good, to get some of the most beautiful peaches there, there is? You don't feel like the consumer has a right to know what you're using? So needless to say, not one peach did I purchase. Never will. As a farmer, if you're growing food and making it available to the public to come and, and get it themselves, those questions, you should be prepared to answer questions like that. Truthfully, <laughs> you know. Some of us take growing food very serious. And if we purchase it, we would like to know, you know, at least if we're purchase, purchasing it from a farmer, we would love to know, what are you doing? What are you using? And that's just how I feel, you know? So until I'm able to get my own 20 peach, peach trees growing and producing very well, then I will have to get it from an organic source, hopefully. And if I can't get it from an organic source, then I will have to do without that, right? Because it's worth it to me. It's worth it to me. And this journey of being um, healthy, health conscious through the food and the places that we source the food from is so important. I wanted to uh, can some more um, wings. I had been canning buffalo wings and um, our chickens don't give us enough wings because it's only like 20 chickens, right? So that's just 40 wings <laughs> per batch or 80 wings, you know what I'm saying? But when you, when you cook wings, you know, that's not a lot <laughs> when you're feeding several people. So I wanted to get some wings and he went to one of the local grocery stores and he bought some wings. And I, I canned them, but I opened the jars because I wanted to know what it was going to taste like. And I told him, I said, I can't eat this. This tastes like it ain't good. You know, and it wasn't, you know, like it was a, you know, a well-known store. It ain't one of those stores that, you know, they might try to get the cheapest foods that they can find. No, no, it was Kroger, actually. And I told Mr. H, I can't do this. So even that has kind of put a, a terrible taste in my mouth for purchasing meat from other locations, right? It's like, well, whatever wings we get, I guess that's just what we got. Because I still have um, two bags of wings in my freezer from our chickens that we processed. And I'm gonna go ahead and use them and just can them up because those wings are delicious. And I can literally taste the difference, you all. Literally taste the difference. So if you buy in meat, 
from grocery stores, make sure that that meat is, is um, man, when they say farm raised, no hormones, no, they have all this stuff that they put on the packaging to tell you what they don't do to the chicken. Make sure you get the best that you can get. Cause otherwise you don't know what you eating. So raising chickens for meat, raising turkeys for meat. Our goats are not for meat. Those are dairy goats for us. Milk is delicious by the way. And then raising our own food, our own vegetables here. Man, it's hard work, but I'm glad to do it. It has me very tired sometimes, but I'm glad to do it. I'm glad to do it. Mm -hmm. So y'all, that's really what I wanted to share with you. Growing your own food. Wow, it's like, you don't know what you buy nowadays. When you just go to the store and pick up a tomato, when you just go to the store and, and buy some spinach, you don't know what you're buying. You don't know what they sprayed on that stuff now. You can grow spinach in coffee cans, y'all. You can grow lettuce in coffee cans. You can buy the little um, flower pots from like the Dollar General or something like that, like three, four, five dollars for the nice little long trays that might be like five bucks. You all can grow lettuce and spinach in that. You can grow radishes in that. You can grow beets in that. I've seen people grow beets in sale trays. Yeah, in sale trays. They didn't plant them close together. They would plant, skip one plant. I've seen people grow their food by any means necessary. Yeah, I've seen people use whatever means they could to grow their own food. So you all, that's all I wanted to share with you on that. If you can do so, start trying to grow your own food. And if you have to buy it, buy the best that your money can afford. Get, get the best that you can get because that is what you're putting in your body. And whatever you putting in your body, if it was bad before it went in, well, what is it gonna do to you? What is it gonna do to you if they sprayed all kind of chemicals on it and then you go and eat that, what is it gonna do to you? So just be careful of what and where you buy your food. Don't be afraid if you buy it from farmers, like you have a lot of pick your own places like strawberries and blueberries. You have a lot of farms like that. Don't be afraid to ask them, what do they use? What kind of fertilizers do they use? Do they use chemical fertilizers? Don't be afraid to ask them that. This land is suffering right now because of all the terrible things that they have put in the earth. All of the terrible things and we wonder why the soil is no good anymore and why, why now we have to build soil. Wow. That soil is vital to life. So we have to be mindful of these things, you all. So I have to, I had to come on and just share that with you because it was on my mind as I was walking through and just, you know, looking at the leaves and all of that. And everything looks good. <laughs> everything looks good. There's no pest damage at all right now, right? And so, and really the pest pressure is low in the fall, different from the spring and summer but the pest pressure is pretty low right now, but everything looks so good. And we have to learn to work with nature in order to be able to grow our own foods organically, all right? So you, I'm not gonna go on and on and on with this. I, I hope that you understand where I'm coming from with this, that, um, yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes folks say, you know what, you, you let the bugs take too much. Not really, not really. 
It's just that I have to learn. It's something, there's a lesson in that for me. You know, I have to learn how to deal with these, what we call pests naturally. I have to learn how to deal with them organically. I have to study more on why they show up in the first place. What am I doing to bring them here, right? And what can I do to prevent them? Not wait, wait till they come and then try to get rid of them. No, what can I do preventatively to protect my crops, right? Yeah. So y'all, that's gonna do it. This is, this is learning all the time, day in and day out when you are gardening, when you're farming, there's always lessons to be learned. And I'm still learning them, all right? So you all, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss videos we upload to our channel. Thank y'all so much again for watching Homestead Heart. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you. Please, please, please start to grow your groceries in whatever space you have. Start to grow your groceries. I'm going to see y'all in the next video.